Welcome to the beautiful world of aquascaping, to the Green Aqua Gallery in Budapest, Hungary. I am very excited today because this aquarium is a special kind of aquarium that has a sump filter underneath. And today we're going to speak about sump filters and about uh, cube aquariums and planted aquariums and aquascaping all together. Join us. Here is where Yes, today let's go back to the, to the main star of this video, uh, the 90 centimeter cube that I have here right behind me. Uh, it was built by Green Aqua founding member Attila Neder, one of my business partners uh, here at this uh, beautiful venture. And I'm going to present you Attila, Otti as I call him, right after this. So as I promised you, I have here Otti right Hi next guys. to me. He is uh, one of the Green Aqua founding members. Actually, Green Aqua started with him because he, he had run a blog on the Hungarian internet and uh, we joined uh, uh, forces there with, with the third partner of ours, Victor. And uh, it was Attila's mind who had created this aquarium. Thank you, thank you, thank you. He, uh, he, he told me that he wants an aquarium that is uh, more of a classic conventional style compared to the other uh, cube aquarium that we presented you last week. Tommy had presented you with that aquarium. You can find the, the video link here. And uh, Attila told me that uh, he wants a more classic style, as I told you. And uh, he also told me that he wants to show you guys how a sump filter works, right? Yes, yes. Yes, that what we were talking about earlier is that, uh, is that some systems are good for aquariums above, um, let's say, 1,000 liters. Yes. That's recommended, but you can have some filters at 400, uh, uh, 500 liters. Yes, so whatever I'm going to say now, it's uh, basically uh, the instructions that I got from Otti. So my words is going to be Otti's words, and I hope that the whole aquarium got to the point where he imagined it, right? Yes, yes, exactly. Okay, so uh, thanks again. See you later. Thanks. See you guys. Life is worth living. Some filters are not very common in the, the planted aquarium hobby. Uh, because uh, most of the planted aquariums that we have in our homes and uh, offices are smaller size. Sumps are recommended and aquariums with overflow are recommended above uh, uh, three, five hundred liters, but the real advantage comes uh, above one thousand liters. Aquariums of thousands of liters can operate with a sump uh, filtered system. Uh, here in the Green Aqua Gallery, we wanted to show you how this works because we wanted you to have an idea of how an aquarium like this works. Um, basically, you don't need that for this 90 centimeter cube of the size of uh, 90 by 90 by 45 centimeters. Uh, as you saw last week, it can go, it can operate pretty well with just one uh, 2080 Eheim filter, external filter. The sump filter below this aquarium is about um, 80 or 100 liters. Um, the size of it was determined by the size of the cabinet. We needed to fit it in the, uh, on, on this left side here, right down there. You can see it now. And it has three chambers, four chambers actually. Uh, the first one is the pre-filtering chamber where you have the sponge. After that, you have the biological filter media and the fine filter mesh, which we actually change pretty regularly. And then after that, you have a 2,100 liter per hour Eheim pump that will pump the water back into the aquarium. Using an overflow is uh, very convenient. Why? Because it keeps the water level at the same height. So the water actually, no matter how much it evaporates, will stay the same. But the only thing that you have to be aware of is that you need to refill the water inside the sump filter from time to time because the, the water will disappear from uh, the sump filter, not from the aquarium itself. 
Another difference with the sump filters is that you don't need such a strong flow as with the external filters. Here, uh, it's enough to have a little bit uh, lower flow because the higher filter media inside the sump filter, the higher volume filter media inside the sump filter will compensate for the lack of flow. Here on the far right corner, left, it's not right. So in the far left corner, you can see that uh, we needed to raise the substrate in order to be able to hide the overflow chamber. That, uh, and, and also we decided to have some plants on the top of it, which can grow out of the aquarium, and then you can have a nice uh, view from the top as well. So actually when you enter the gallery, the Green Aqua Gallery, you will see that, that some plants are growing out of the aquarium and that they are uh, normal swamp plants. And we also wanted to avoid the diorama look in this aquarium, which means that we were using ferns, bigger plants, and we were using a lot of rocks. We used 180 kilograms of Frodo stone in this aquarium only. It's a lot of hardscape to put into an aquarium, but we needed that in order to have three layers, three steps that are gradually increasing towards the back of the aquarium to cover uh, the overflow, as I mentioned earlier. In accordance to that, we were using, uh, I think, 60 liters of ADA Aqua Soil Amazonia uh, with the ADA substrate system that uh, we installed into this aquarium. Uh, it has uh, ADA power sand and it has, uh, as I mentioned, 60 liters of ADA Aquasol Amazonia in it. Actually, we were not using the normal ADA Aquasol Amazonia in this tank, but we were using the Aquasol Amazonia light in this tank. And you can see that, you can feel that the plants are growing a little bit slower as Amazonia light has less nutrients. This is a disadvantage of Amazonia light, but there's a huge advantage for you guys who want to use this substrate, is that the Amazonia light is much less, makes your aquarium much less prone to algae because there's no ammonia spikes, accentuated ammonia spikes like with other Amazonia substrates. And why are ammonia spikes dangerous? Because, as I'm telling you with every uh, video that we're making, if you want algae, you need a lot of light and you need a lot of ammonia. If you have a good filtration and you have a good light soil, then ammonia spikes are less likely to happen because the bacteria living in your filter will decompose ammonia into nitrates and that is a good thing to have and water changes will take the excess, excess nitrates out of your system. I always have to tell you guys that. Also we used uh, Colorado sand in the foreground to have the, uh, the tropical forest look that Otti uh, wanted to, to present you with this aquarium. As I told you earlier, this is a test aquarium. We wanted to test how the overflow system and how the sump system works, and it works perfectly. You only need to drill three holes. Actually, we, we had two holes in this aquarium in the overflow chamber. One hole is for the uh, outflow, and uh, one disadvantage of using a chamber is that the outflow is a little bit more noisy than a, a regular external filter is. So. Uh, we needed to fill the chamber with water and uh, as you can see on the picture, the water covers the whole chamber and, and we glued in a pipe in the middle of the chamber and that pipe will lead the water out with less noise so you cannot hear the water going down on the walls of the chamber. And the outflow is a custom glass uh, lily pipe that we used and we just tucked it in. It's actually easy to take it out and clean it and then you can just put it back in and there's a rubber ring that will hold it in place and it will prevent the water to, uh, to, to move around it. This is uh, one of the lowest cycling uh, aquariums at Green Aqua. For some reason the whole setup of the aquarium was uh, made a little bit slower than with other aquariums and we think this is because of the CO2 solution that we used. We used the JBL uh, external diffuser which has a lower diffusion rate than the normal aquamedic external reactor that uh, we used in the other 90 centimeter cube. You can see it on the picture now. And also we think that the sump drews out the CO2 a little bit more than an external filter would do because you have a, a higher surface and you have water moving in and, and also CO2 can, can get out of the system there. As for the plants, uh, as Otti mentioned earlier to me, uh, he was trying to use slow-growing plants that are easy to maintain, easy to trim, you, they need less trimming, 
and he was trying to achieve the classical look with classical uh, low-growing plants. The main plant in this aquarium is the Bulbitis. It is in the middle of the tank and the uh, nice dark green colors are dominating the scape. Right next to it you can see the Nymphae Lotus, a nice red plant that gives a little bit of contrast to the whole scape. And it goes well with the reddish tint of the Frodo stones. Actually, if you're looking at the tank from a distance, you can see that it has a lot more red than the other tanks in the gallery. And this red is formed by using the Frodo stones and using the Nymphoides lotus, and also by using the ATA lights that we have above this aquarium. Now that we're talking about the lights, we are using the same 4x39 watt ATA lights above this aquarium. Actually, two of them is the same lighting that we used in the other tank uh, that uh, Tommy was presenting you last week. And uh, this is also a little bit more reddish light that gives a nice fluorescent and clean look to the aquarium. There's no shimmering effect under these lights on the substrate, so you don't see any shadows. The light is nice and even everywhere. This also accentuates the clean and classic look of this aquarium. Uh, one of the lights was raised a little bit compared to the other one because we needed to give some room to the plants that grew out, the swamp plants that are growing out uh, from the corner of the tank where the overflow is. Let's move on with the plants. Aside from the Bulbitis and uh, the Lotus, we were using the Staurogyne and we were using the Bucephalandras uh, between the rocks. And these are little patches that add some detail to the tank and they have different colors. Uh, and they are stand well uh, right next to the Parvula Mini or Aziculares Mini uh, that we used as a carpeting plant on layer one step one and layer two, step two uh, in the aquarium. And if you look closer, you can also see that we were using Gratiola Vistidula in, uh, in this tank, just uh, a couple of stems here to add some detail. And lastly, we were using the Hygrophila pinatifida, which is also a nice red plant and also gives, uh, adds a little bit to the reddish tint of the tank. And it's everywhere in patches and uh, using a lot of ferns like Bulbitis and uh, pinatifida in this tank, are, are, you know, like accentuate the classic look that Otti wanted to achieve uh, with this layout. As for the fish, we were using the chocolate gouramis and the rambu barb in this tank and uh, their colors also accentuate and also go well with the frontal stones that we used. Uh, we really like these fish, they swim together quite nicely and they also have a good size uh, in comparison with the size of the tank. All right guys, so uh, now you know what kind of plants and what kind of fish we used in this classical style aquarium with the sump filter, the experimental sump filter that you can use with bigger tank as well. Please let us know in the comments below which uh, style you prefer more. Do you like the classical style aquariums? Do you like the modern style Iwagumi aquariums? Up to you, we want to know, let's discuss it. And we are very excited because the Green Aqua YouTube channel is reaching the 10K milestone. Thanks for all of your support. Uh, we are celebrating this occasion by giving away a bag of goodies uh, to one of you guys who subscribe to uh, the Green Aqua YouTube channel. So please subscribe. It's not too late, you can still win the bag of goodies. Guys, this was all for today. We really like your feedback. We really need your feedback. If you comment and just, just say a couple of nice or even uh, critical words uh, below uh, this video, we would really appreciate it because it motivates us a lot. And uh, we really need the feedback from you. If you like the Green Aqua YouTube channel, you can subscribe, as I told you, and also you can uh, click the bell button and then you will get notified by all the uh, future video uploads that we're going to make. Uh, until next week, goodbye. And I love